you have to establish justice. Don't see this person is poor, so I have to be in favor of this person. This person is rich, I have to be in favor of this person. You love your parents, you love yourself, you love your relatives, but no, when it comes to justice, you have to sideline all these feelings and you have to establish justice. And you know, the feeling of love towards your parents, the feeling of love towards yourselves, the feeling of love towards your relatives, the feeling of love towards the rich, or maybe a feeling of pity towards the poor, these things may serve you to commit injustice. So Allah says, no, ya yuhalladzina amanu kunu qawwamina bilqis chuhada alillah. Stand out firmly for justice as witnesses to Allah. For the sake of Allah, you have to establish justice, you have to be just for Allah's sake. Now this is the example of love. Now the other impediment I talked about was hatred. Allah says in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 8. Allah says, Ya yuhallazina amanu, O you who believe, Kunu qawwameena lillahi shuhada bilqist. Stand out for Allah as witnesses to fair dealing, as witnesses to justice. وَلَا يَجْرِمَنَّكُمْ شَنَآنُ قَوْمٍ عَلَىٰ أَلَّا تَعْدِلُوا اَيْدِلُوا هُوَ أَقْرَبُ لِلْتَّقْوَىٰ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ Allah says, stand out firmly for justice for Allah as witnesses to fair dealing. And do not let the hatred of any community commit injustice upon them. Do not let the hatred of a particular community to commit injustice upon them. Be just, that is next to piety, and fear Allah. So even if you hate a particular community, you are not supposed to do injustice to them. So this is the example of hatred. Two barriers addressed in the Quran. Surah Nisa chapter 4 verse number 135 and Surah Maida chapter number 5 verse number 8. Two barriers, love and hatred are addressed in the Quran. Even if you love yourself, your parents, your relatives, you have to be just. Even if you hate a community, you have to be just. And justice is next to piety, it is next to righteousness, and you have to fear Allah. Let me give you some examples of love and hatred. How the Prophet ﷺ or his companions dealt with these feelings, when these feelings arose in their mind, how they dealt with it, and how they established justice in their lifetime. It is mentioned in Sahih Muslim, volume number 3, Hadith number 4188 During the time of Fateh Makkah there was a woman who committed theft and she was from the Makhzumi tribe a tribe of Quraysh from a noble family so the woman she committed theft so the Quraysh were worried that Allah's messenger will implement the punishment of theft that is cutting of the hand and this woman she is from the Quraysh so there should be someone to intercede on her behalf to Allah's messenger and they were discussing and they said Osama bin Zaid he is the loved one he is the one whom Allah's messenger loved the most so he should intercede on behalf of this woman and Osama bin Zaid he approached the Prophet ﷺ and he interceded on behalf of that woman and the woman was there. He said, Allah's Messenger, please do not implement the punishment of theft on this woman. And do you know what was the reaction of Allah's Messenger? What was his reaction? The Hadith said that the color of the face of Allah's Messenger changed and he became angry. He stood up and he said, Osama, do you intercede in the punishment prescribed by Allah? Do you intercede in that? Osama said, Oh Allah's Messenger, seek forgiveness from me. Forgive me, seek my forgiveness from Allah. And Prophet ﷺ, he sat down. And after the Maghrib Salah, he again stood up. He praised Allah as he deserved to be praised. And he said, now on the topic. He said, Ya Yuhallazina Amanu, O people, O you who believe, the nations were destroyed because of this, because people, they spared those people who are from the high family, from the noble family, from the high ranks, and they inflicted punishment on the weak people. 
Because of this reason, the nations were destroyed. And then he said the most important thing, the Prophet ﷺ. The most important thing he said. He said, by Allah, in whose hand is my soul? If Fatima, the daughter of Muhammad, if she would have committed theft, I would have cut off her hand. He said, by Allah, in whose hand is my soul? If Fatima, the daughter of Muhammad wasallam, if she would have committed theft, if she was there in the place of that woman, I would have surely cut off her hand. That was the justice of Allah's messenger. And the hand of that woman from the Quraysh tribe, from the Makhzumi tribe, was cut off. And Aisha radiallahu anha said that that woman, then later on she was married, and then she used to come to us and we used to resolve her matters. This is the example how you can overcome the feeling of love. You know, Osama bin Zaid and the Qureshis that were there, they loved that woman because she was from their tribe. The love of the tribe was swerving them from committing justice, from implementing justice. And Allah's Messenger, though he loved Osama bin Zaid, but he did not agree with his opinion. He did not say, okay, because Osama interceded on her behalf, so I have to agree with him. He did not say that. And the greatest statement that he made, he said, if Fatima, the daughter of Muhammad, if she would have committed theft, I would have cut off her hand. I would have cut off her hand. Even the love of the Prophet towards Fatima, radiallahu anha, it would not prevent him from being just. Another example. During the caliphate of Hazrat Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, he lost his armor. This narration is there in Al-Bidaya wa Nihaya, volume number 4, page number 8. So during the caliphate of Hazrat Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, he lost his armor during the battle of Safin. And suddenly he saw the armor in the hand of a Christian. So he decided to take up the matter legally. And he approached the judge, the Qazi Shurey. Shurey was the Qazi at that time appointed by Hazrat Ali. So he approached the Qazi and the matter was brought in front of the Qazi. Ali radiallahu anhu, he said that Qazi Shurey, I have not sold my armor, neither have I given it away. And this armor is mine. So the Qazi Shurey, he asked the Christian, is it your armor? Didn't you hear what the leader of the believers claim? Didn't you hear that? What do you have to say about it? The Christian said, the armor is with me. This armor is with me. And I do not regard the leader of the believers to be a liar. He said this. He said, this armor is with me, but I do not regard Ali as a liar. So the Qazi Shure, he asked Hazrat Ali, may Allah you please with him. Do you have any proof that this armor is yours? Do you have any proof? Hazrat Ali said, ha, I do not. I don't have any proof. So Qazi Shure, he gave the decision in favor of the Christian. He said, because the armor is with him, it belonged to him, and Ali could not produce any evidence for his claim, so this armor is with the Christian and the decision goes in favor of that Christian. And the Christian, he walked away, but then he returned. He walked away, but then he returned. He said, this is the judgment of the prophets. The Amirul Mu'mineen, the leader of the believers, the Caliph, he is taking me to the Qazi, to the judge. And the judge is giving the decision against him. He said, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. He said, I bear witness that there is none God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. And he said, This armor is yours, Ali. I got it in the battle of Sifin. In the battle of Sifin, this armor, it fell from your equipment, and I took it. And he gave it to Hazrat Ali. And Hazrat Ali said, because you accepted Islam, this armor is yours. It is yours. That's what he said. Can you imagine, my dear brothers and sisters, the justice 